Hey, it's Blake with Texas Bee Supply. Uh, we want to do a video today about adding boxes to your hive. You know, there's a lot of questions around, do I add a super, do I add a brood box? Do I use a deep or a medium? Do I try to make honey or do I make bees? Uh, when do I add a box? What should the hive look like before I add a box? And so we want to try to answer a lot of those questions today on uh, adding boxes. And, and there's so much confusion around it and there's so many opinions and methods. Uh, I want to show you guys the principles behind it and explain it as clearly as I can um, how and why to add boxes. So one of the things to mention is you can see all these videos on our website on texasbeesupply.com uh, if you want to take a look at uh, some of the videos or many, some of the others that we've, we've done as well. So one of the main principles to mention uh, before we get started is um, you know, when we add boxes, we're usually trying to do one of two things. We're giving the bees more room so they can make honey or make more bees, or we're really trying to um, prevent them from swarming. Because if a hive gets overcrowded, then they swarm. And we want to add more space before they get overcrowded anyway, so they can grow as efficiently as possible and have the room they need. As a general rule of thumb, you always need to add another box anytime one box becomes 80% full. So if it's it's your first brood box, if it's your second brood box, if it's your third super, anytime that top box gets about 80% full of bees um, or honey, it's time to add another box. So just keep that 80% rule in mind. It's better to err on the side of a little bit sooner than too late when it comes to adding more boxes. So let's um, first let's take a look at a hive and see if it's ready to add a super two. So let's take a look at this hive and just get a feel for how we're doing strength wise. What I like to do is not use smoke uh, at first when I'm trying to add a super because I want to get a really good feel for the bee population. Okay, so this one is absolutely ready for a super. I would call this hive pretty much completely full of bees. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking at the outside and I've got bees hanging out here. I've got bees between the frames all the way to the outside. I would say this box is, you know, 90, 95% full of bees. And remember that 80% rule. So this one definitely needs a super. Um, and that's really all I'm looking at as far as whether or not to add a super. Obviously the hive needs to be queen right, needs to have brood, but I'm looking at that bee population and how full it is. And so in this case, I'm ready to add a box. So I would give them a little bit of smoke, get the bees running down. Now, if this is your first year in beekeeping, then you don't have honeycomb to add. You just have boxes of foundation. So these are our boxes of foundation. They have frames with foundation, but they don't have beeswax on them yet. That's what we need the bees to do. So before we uh, add a box, let's talk about deep box deep boxes versus mediums and here you can see we've got we've got a, a new deep box and a new medium box so deep boxes I don't usually um, if you're in North Texas I don't usually recommend a deep box to make honey with because in North Texas we usually make about 40 pounds per hive which a medium box holds if you're in the southeast Texas the Houston greater Houston area you can use a deep box because a lot of times you'll make 60 to 80 pounds of honey in that region because of the different flowering plants. So if you're in North Texas, I would stick with a medium box for your honey. If you're in Southeast Texas, I would go with a, a deep box, could go with a deep box or at least two medium boxes. Now, if you want to make honey, you know, if you're all about making honey and this is your first year in and you say, you know what, I just really want to make honey, then you're going to want to add a honey super directly above your brood nest, okay? If you say, you know what, if I make a tiny bit of honey, I'm okay with that. I really wanna grow my bees and I really wanna make splits to increase my hive count next year, then you're gonna add a deep box right above this brood nest and, uh, and focus on raising bees and growing your beehive rather than adding a honey super. So at this stage, either way, you're gonna add your brand new honey super directly over your hive. So whether it's a deep box or medium box, regardless of what you're doing with it, you're just gonna put it directly on top of the hive. 
space those frames out a little bit, and you're done. It's that simple. Um, now, you're gonna to wanna to keep feeding this hive because you want them to move up into that honey super and you want them to start drawing out that honeycomb. They can't draw honeycomb if they don't have food and a lot of it. It takes 11 pounds of honey or syrup to make one pound of beeswax. So the bees need a lot of food to draw out foundation. So once you put it directly on, whether it's a deep or medium, keep feeding. And what you're looking for is a sign of when it's time to stop feeding, is you're looking for them to start drawing out these middle frames. And so if you pull up this middle frame and they've got about a fist size piece of wax drawn out on, I'm gonna say at least two or three frames, if they've got a fist size piece of honeycomb drawn out on two or three frames, then you can stop feeding and they'll continue. This is if you wanna make honey. Stop feeding and they'll continue drawing out that foundation with the natural nectar coming in. And once this box, and we're talking for honey here, if you really are just wanting to make a honey crop, uh, once you've stopped feeding and they've got a fist sized piece of comb drawn out, that's when you want to add your queen excluder. And so to add your queen excluder, you would just smoke the bees down. You would gently shake the, shake the box to get the bees out of it because you don't want the queen to be up here. You would put down your queen excluder and then you would put this box back up on top and the bees will continue drawing out that comb through the queen excluder the bees will not draw out comb they won't start drawing out comb through a queen excluder so if we were to just put down a queen excluder and put down this box on top of it before the bees had drawn out that fist sized piece of comb on two or three frames they would typically never move through that queen excluder to get started they've got to get started drawing it out without a queen excluder and then they'll move up uh, once they've gotten started. So at this point, it's pretty simple. Um, they've started drawing out the foundation, you've added your queen excluder, um, and now they'll just keep drawing it out. Once this box becomes about 80% full, uh, then you're ready for your next box. So, you know, look at these outside frames. If they've got a fist size piece going on the outside of each of these frames and the middle frames are all full of wax and honey, then you're ready for your second box and you can just put that right on top. Now, if you want to, uh, and again, if, if this is for honey, making honey, you know, same principle, for, same principle for a deep, no different. Now, if you want to make bees and you're not, you don't have a top priority of making honey and you really wanna make bees and make splits next year, things change just a little bit. So let's go back to the beginning. Okay, so this is our hive. It's ready for a second box. And let's say that honey production isn't your number one goal. What I would do, no queen excluder, I would add a deep box right on top, okay? And I would keep feeding them like crazy because what you want them to do is you want them to move up into the second box and draw out all the comb you want that queen bee to move up into the top box and keep rearing brood. It means you're gonna have a stronger and stronger hive. And you want them to do all that as quickly as possible because that means your hive's just gonna get that much stronger, that much quicker. So for this instance, if honey production isn't my main goal, I'm never gonna add a queen excluder. I'm gonna keep feeding them and even as they draw all this out. If honey production isn't my main goal, I don't really care if I have syrup stored up in the second box. So I keep feeding them as they draw this second box out and as that queen moves up and keeps laying brood. Now what you can do is once they've started drawing out these outside frames, then you're gonna be ready for another box. And this is where if you're lucky and your hive is really, really good in your first year, this is where you might be able to do this method and make some honey. So if they've already started drawing out these outside frames and the honey flow isn't over yet. So if it's, you know, most of Texas, if it's, I would say late May and they've already drawn out the second box, um, then you can actually then add a third box right up on top to try to make some honey. Same principle applies. Add the box, keep feeding them, wait till they get a fifth size piece of comb drawn out on two or three of these frames. Um, shake the bees out, add your queen excluder, stop feeding, 
if I don't finish drawing it out with a natural nectar flow. Now, at this point, you could potentially not use a queen excluder because uh, the queen is, you know, she's pretty maxed out keeping these bottom two boxes full of brood. And so about 70% of the time, uh, you know, you could not add a queen excluder and just put honey up in this top box. Um, 30% of the time she's going to move up there as well, which again isn't the end of the world uh, if she does. If you have some brood up with honey super, it's, it's really not a problem. You can just, uh, um, you know, extract the frames that do have honey and leave the ones with brood inside the hive. So, and that, that's really it. I mean, that's the principles of adding supers versus doing it for uh, brood production. There's a lot of options, which I know can make it confusing. But again, if your main focus is honey, then everything above that second box i'm sorry everything above that first box can be your honey supers uh, if your main emphasis is growing bees and splitting the next year um, then just adding that deep is is important and the, the advantage of adding that deep if you want to grow the next year is for next year you've got a deep box that can become your second hive and so you can go to our website and see a video we're about to put up on uh making splits but you you kind of need it's helpful to have this second box full of uh, bees and brood next spring um, to make splits. The only final note is if you are extracting honey, uh, let's say honey was your main focus this year, not, not bee or brood production or splitting next year. Mm -hmm. And let's pretend this is full of honey and you've got your queen excluder on and you extracted it. What you're gonna wanna do when you finish extracting the honey out of it is you're gonna to want to immediately, like the day after you have extracted honey, you're gonna to wanna to remove your queen excluder and now put this newly extracted box right back on top of your hive and uh, let the bees clean it up, move up into it, and ideally let the queen move up into it over the summertime because bees do not do well in the state of Texas um, with just one box going through the summer. It's way too hot for them. So you really gotta have a second box over the summer. And so after you extract, whether it was a medium or a deep, after you extract, put that box back on without the queen excluder and let them use it as a second fruit box. And then next year, um, you've already got your, you know, you've got your brood boxes going um, and then you can just start adding honey supers above your two boxes uh, the following year. So the ideal state for bees is to have at least a deep and a medium for a brood nest and everything above that is honey supers or two deeps. It you know, doesn't matter a whole lot. You can use a deep and a medium for a brood nest or two deeps. Um, that's kind of the ideal state. And so next year, once you've got all this comb drawn out, you can kind of revert to that. And then, uh, but this year, if you really want to make honey, follow the method I talked about in the beginning of the video, which is you know, just putting that queen excluder on after they start drawing out that first fist sized piece of comb um, right above the, the bottom brood nest. So if you have any questions, let us know. Um, and we'd love, to, we'd love to hear from you if we can answer any further questions. And uh, let us know if you have any other videos you'd like for us to make. Thanks.